Hello, good evening everybody and welcome to the physics uh, virtual open evening presentation. Okay, my name is Dr. Bauer, I'm head of physics and computer science here at Hills Road uh, and tonight I'm going to give you a talk about, uh, I'll give you an overview of the physics department and an introduction to why you might wish to study physics with us here at Hills Road. Uh, tonight I'm also joined by Miss Nayeri, she's one of our physics teachers and she will be helping answer some of your questions. Please feel free to post any questions that you may have about the physics department or about physics as a subject and course uh, and throughout the evening we will try and answer those questions for you. Okay, don't worry if we, if we don't manage to answer one of your questions uh, as part of the session tonight. We will uh, get back to you as soon as we can. Okay, so we, we will post you um, answers to all questions that were unanswered as part of the uh, talk tonight. Okay, so let's make a start. So why study physics? Okay, so as you can see, physics, opens the doors to some of the most exciting and cutting edge rewarding jobs in the world okay employers are crying out for people with physics skills so take a look around the room that you're sitting in from the chair that you're uh, sitting on to the computer your watch your phone the clothes that you are wearing there isn't one thing that a physicist hasn't studied okay physics is everywhere physics is around you know physics is the world okay so a knowledge of physics can lead you into many jobs okay so here as we can see there are a vast range of careers but not just those music the arts you know uh, we had a student a couple of years ago go into silversmithing okay with his physics degree OK, so it's not just science and technology. And we would encourage uh, students, uh, not just your double mathematicians, your chemists and your computer scientists to study physics, but your artists, your musicians. We would encourage you to study physics as well. OK, so. OK, any gamers out there? creativity, AI, robotics, all crying out for those physics skills. So as a student, what will you gain from studying physics? Well, aside from the knowledge of the natural laws of physics, you will develop a many, a host of invaluable transferable skills. We do try and encourage you to become independent learners. You know, not only as you progress on through your course and on to university, but independence is a key skill for in the workplace. A key strength of physicists is their ability to problem solve. Physicists are keen problem solvers. Their ability to look at information, to disseminate that uh, and see a route through to, the, uh, to a solution to a problem is a key skill of physicists. OK, what makes physicists different to mathematicians? And that is measurement. Physicists measure things. We do experiments. OK, so here in, in the images, you can see a year 12 experiment investigating standing waves, looking at tension, say, in the wire, and what effect that has on the frequency of the wave. OK, uh, a year 12 and year 13 demo, we look at things like electron diffraction. So these are some of the things that you would be privy to studying physics at Hills Road. So through experiments, we obtain data, we develop those organization skills, the ability to analyze and interpret this, that scientific data. From that data, we, we look at the relationships between phys physical quantities. Okay. From that, we can uh, construct scientific and logical arguments and explanations. So a key uh, skill of a physicist is that ability to communicate in a logical, clear and concise way that will allow people to understand what is often the inexplicable to them. 
So the physics course as well. So here at Hills Road, we study the AQA syllabus that will be familiar to a lot of you from GCSE. Okay, so we divide the course across the two years. So in year 12 or the first year of your A-level, we start off with subjects that will be quite familiar to you. So we will start off with some mechanics uh, and some electricity topics. Um, so we don't just drop you in at the deep end, we build you up, we take what you know uh, and build on that. One of the fundamental differences of A-level over GCSE is that depth and knowledge of understanding. So we take those mathematical con concepts and try and understand the physics behind them. Okay, so after sort of a little bit of mechanics and uh, electricity, we'll then introduce you to whet your appetite to something new and we'll let you study a little bit of particle physics. Through that, there are lots of demos, get to look at some of the cloud chambers uh, and things from there. Uh, and then we move on again to more uh, common topics such as materials and waves and then leading you into further mechanics such as circular motion and simple harmonic motion. Thermal physics, the Boyle's law, those gas laws, they build up on some of your GCSE knowledge. Okay, and then we introduce you to the fields, so gravitational fields, electric fields, magnetic fields. Okay, and then along with this, we introduce you to the wonderful world of radiation and quantum physics. As part of the AQA syllabus, there is a, a optional topic. At Hills Road, we study the uh, turning points option. So there are a choice of four or five options. We have turning points in physics, medical physics, engineering, astro and electronics. Uh, at the moment, we study turning points, which takes you into the world of Newton's laws and beyond, and then into Einstein's special relativity. Okay. Uh, and also gives you a flavor of some of the historical changes uh, throughout, uh, his, throughout um, physics history. Support. A-level can be a step up from uh, GCSE and can seem a little bit daunting at first. And there will be topics that you find intuitive and um, easy, and there will other topics that you will struggle a bit. To help you with that, we offer you question booklets that go with each topic. So a range of questions that you can study in your own time or your teacher may set as homework for you to do independently at home, okay? To help you test your knowledge and understanding as we go through each topic. Alongside that question booklet, we give you access to uh, the Oxford University Press uh, AQA Physics textbook. So that is available to you through the Caboodle website. Uh, some of you may be familiar with that from your current schools. Okay, so along with the textbook, you will have access to video resources, podcasts, uh, and worksheets on that site. We have our own student SharePoint site. So on that student SharePoint, uh, site, we put all of our resources, it's a massively resourced website, so we put all of our lesson PowerPoints, all of our practical sheets go up there, um, all of your, all of these questions that you would find in the question booklets are there, as well as the answers to those questions. We put lots of exam practice questions up there, links to videos, uh, links to extension material, links to support material. So there is a whole range of, of resources available to you. As well as that, we subscribe to some third party resources such as the A-Level Physics online video tutorials. Some of you may be familiar with those as they now do 
GCSE video tutorials. Uh, so these are mini little video lessons clips covering all of the AQA specification for both year 12 and year 13. So they're always worth uh, a look at if you're not sure about a particular uh, topic or you, you just couldn't remember something from one of the lessons. Isaac Physics is another resource that we use uh, widely at uh, A-level here at Hills Road. Again, some of you may be familiar with this at GCSC. Uh, it's great for those online consolidation questions. They run the Senior Physics Challenge as well and do some really good extension uh, challenging questions. Students themselves set up their own uh, online forums. They may set up a class group um, within the cohort uh, and help each other and ask questions about homework. As staff, we run daily online lunchtime workshops. So these at the moment are run online, but generally would be in one of the classrooms uh, every lunchtime in the physics department. We also offer a peer mentoring scheme where upper six students will peer mentor and help support uh, year 12 students. And that can be done through teams or in a non-COVID situation face-to-face -face at a time for students that is mutually convenient to both students. Okay. And also it's an open doors policy. You know, we encourage students to also contact teachers and ask for support or extra resources as and when they need it. Okay. Assessment. Throughout your time here at Hills Road, we will assess your knowledge uh, through internal tests to help you um, with and develop your skills uh, answering these tests we set summary homeworks usually one or two per topic so big topics will have at least two summary homeworks smaller topics only the one okay these are open book with what we call formative feedback so you can use your notes you can use the textbooks you can ask each other come to a workshop and ask for help we do record these marks but they don't count towards any formal assessment at the end of the year. It's purely just for our records so we can see how you progress and develop. So they're there for you to practice your exam technique, just check your understanding of a topic before we test you formally. At the end of each topic, towards the end of topics, we will give you a test. These will take the form of a multiple choice test and this year um, a longer answer test in the form of exam questions. Okay, At the end of your first term, so just before December in year 12, we will give you a test on everything up until that point and then again at the end of year 12. And that test at the end of year 12 is usually what we use to make a judgment about your performance at A level, so your UCAS prediction. Throughout all of this, there is the practical endorsement. So this is assessed across both years, in year 12 and year 13. So like in GCSE, where you have those required practicals, we have 12 required practicals at A level, and these are done over both year 12 and year 13. Within those practicals, we will assess you based on a range of common practical assessment criteria. And these criteria are common to every exam board. So whether that's AQA, OCR, Edexcel, these common practical assessment criteria are the same. Okay, so this is a teacher's assessment. And at the end of your two years, you will get a pass or a fail for that uh, practical endorsement. Okay. Regardless of whether you pass or fail the practical endorsement, it does not affect your A-level exam grade. However, some universities and some subjects will require you to have a pass in your practical endorsement as one of the entry criteria uh, for university. Okay. 
In terms of the exam, the AQA assessment, that is obviously taken at the end of year 13. There are three papers. The first paper is primarily year 12 topics, but it also includes the further mechanics, so simple harmonic motion and circular motion. Paper two is uh, primarily year 13 topics, but does assume your knowledge from year 12. Okay, so we'll take knowledge from year 12 and apply it to year 13 topics. Then the final paper, paper three, is split into two parts. So paper three, part A, is practical skills questions. So these are questions based on the 12 required practicals from across your two years. And then part B is the optional topic, which for us is turning points. Throughout all of this on SharePoint, we provide extra resources, uh, lots of uh, exam questions for you to work through, uh, lots of extension materials and lots of support materials for you to work through independently and for you to be able to self-assess. Uh, as part of your revision process. Okay, I see there's lots of questions coming in, which is fantastic. So keep those questions coming in. That's great. Extracurricular opportunities. As part of the department upstairs on our second floor, we actually have access to a lecture theatre. And approximately once a fortnight, we like to get in external speakers to come in and talk to you about either real engineering problems or their research that they are currently undertaking uh, at university or within a company. We like to encourage past students to come back and tell us about their experiences uh, as well. So from this list, you can see see just a few of the previous talks that happened sort of about this time last year up until lockdown. So these were some of the talks that happened up until the lockdown period. So we had some engineering real, real world problems from searching for the earth uh, and how we store photons with light. Okay. And we generally get a big turnout for some of these talks. We have a couple of years and um, 13 students in the background, so they may be able to answer some questions for you later on about some of the guest speakers and any talks they may have uh, been to. As well as that, we offer lots of, uh, for budding engineers, lots of uh, opportunities for engineers. So we run, the uh, Cambridge Launchpad Scholarship. This is a local scheme uh, and that is created to support the growing demand for STEM skills uh, in the Cambridge area. Uh, and you can apply in teams of up to six students uh, and to take part in a project day with one of the local uh, tech companies. So in recent years, we have had students that have been working with Amazon. So they worked with the Alexa program, uh, Marshall's Aerospace uh, and Defense Group and TTP, which is a technology uh, partnership. We also run the EES or the Engineering Education Scheme at a national competition uh, for sixth form students. We have a, we enter to teams of four to six students and they have six months to come up with an idea um, for a design. Basically, you have to come up with an idea to design a product and develop a prototype uh, before it's judged by a panel of industry and academic experts. Okay, so as part of the EES, you will work with mentors from a local company. For the last two years, we've worked with uh, engineers from ARM. Uh, and those engineers will guide uh, our students through the design and implementation stages. Uh, 
You would then go to uh, the university, a local university engineering department. We get use of their equipment and get to build and test your prototype parts. Uh, if you take part in the scheme, you're enrolled as industrial uh, cadets uh, and go on and basically are entered into a number of national competitions. Okay, so our students last year went on to win the national engineering competition. Uh, they obtained a gold crest award. They were winners in the big bank competition. Uh, they went on and were given an ES innovation award and then attended the final stage of the technology design and innovation challenge. Okay, so very successful. Those road students have been very successful with that. As part of our trips and outings, we like to run an annual CERN trip. Unfortunately, this year that was cancelled due to the coronavirus. However, those students that had managed to secure places uh, then were invited to an online webinar with scientists from CERN itself, and that took place uh, early last week. Okay. We generally go on an annual trip down to London for the Physics in Action lectures. Again, this year, uh, those will be held online. So again, we have a number of students which have signed up to take part in those Physics in, in Action lecture theatre. We have a good relationship with Cambridge University. We like to visit uh, and students go to many of the Institute of Physics, Cambridge University talks there. Again, many of those have been held online this year, and I think they'll be starting next week as the first one of those. In terms of career support, we also run extracurricular workshops to help uh, students wanting to take part in the uh, Physics Olympiad and the British Physics Olympiad. Uh, we support students in applying for Head Start places or year in industry places. Head Start effectively gives students the opportunity to get a taster of university life before applying to university. And we generally have a number of students that are successful in securing Head Start places each year. Okay, so what our students say. So our students, and one of those we do actually have online tonight, so you can find out yourself. Uh, Mia is with us and will be joining us in the uh, question and answer session. So if you have any student specific questions, please post them to the chat. And we'll be happy to answer any questions about the course uh, and their experiences of studying at Hills Road. What's interesting when we've spoken to students uh, that have gone on to university uh, and we have feedback from them is how well prepared they feel for the practical side of their STEM courses that they go on to. Okay, and actually how well prepared in general for study, those independent skills that they uh, gain through studying at Hills and how, how well it helps them when going to university or even into apprenticeships or um, into working roles. Okay. In terms of our student performance, so for about the past four years, we've had a 100% pass rate, uh, with the national pass rate being around 96% for A-level physics. Our A star to B is fairly steady at about 69-70%, with a national A star to B uh, grading of 50% of the cohort. So our physics students are generally uh, strong. They perform highly against the national average there. Okay, courses taken at university. So about 92% of our students will then go on to higher education. Of that, some will go directly into, into employment or apprenticeships. 
um, or a small number into further education. As you can see, primarily those STEM subjects, but not purely STEM. We have historians, we have lawyers. Uh, as I say, we had one student go on to do silversmithing uh, beyond Hills Road. So physics can take you into a wide range of careers. Okay. Uh, and throughout all of these, it's those problem solving skills. It's that ability to think on your feet, uh, which is in high demand. And valued by employers and other courses alike. So I'd like now to introduce you to our year 13 students uh, and they can maybe help you tell you a little bit about their experience of Hills Road uh, and how they have found the physics course. So here we have Mia. Hi Mia, how are you? Hi. Hi. So maybe you could tell us a little bit about why you started or why you chose to study physics. Um, so at A level, I really enjoyed kind of the applications of physics and also the kind of fundamental ideas of it. And I feel like like A level phys physics has really brought that forward. So rather than just looking at the equations and simply plugging in the numbers, like sometimes GCSE is, it was more about understanding the whole idea and linking the concepts and the practical applications with what the equations meant. And that really appealed to me. Excellent. So can you give us a little flavour about what topics you've enjoyed? OK, so we've uh, built on some topics from GCSE, kind of reconsolidating things and adding on more detail, more kind of nuances. Uh, we've also been learning about particle physics, which to me, that's something that I would never have really looked into, but actually found it quite interesting and all the muons and kind of they seem obscure at first but it's kind of cool to find out about something that's very uh cutting edge and modern in contrast to the more traditional like newton's laws and things excellent how did you find this step up from gcse to a level um i found it pretty manageable yeah um i think one bit of advice i'd give to anyone who is making that transition is um, I found the most useful thing was to know your equations because if you know your equations then you can just try and fit that in with things and many of the equations are the same because obviously they're the same. Brilliant, excellent. How have you found practical work? Um, at first I found it a bit challenging because we have to process our results and really think in detail about the uncertainties and everything like that, which is something that I hadn't really considered at GCSE. But over time, I feel like I've got a lot more confident at that, and in particular, plotting Excel graphs and things. So I feel in a much better position to go on and study science at university, which is what I plan to do. Brilliant, excellent. And what about any extracurricular activities? Have you taken part in anything? Okay, yeah. Um, last year, I went to London on the Physics in Action Day. And we uh, got to hear uh, from some really great um, talks, in particular, uh, Andrea Sella, I would recommend to anybody, um, who is, yeah, I found very inspirational. Um, and he gave a talk about, it was kind of uh, unusual, but he, he had some water, uh, some ice and he put it in water and he was telling us how this was like very unusual because most solids are more dense than their liquids, but it floated and it kind of really made me think, well, yeah, we've taken that for granted, but just, yeah, understanding the science is important. Excellent. So what bit of advice, what would you say to all of these students who are sat out there in your position from a couple of years ago, de deciding whether to take physics or not? Is there any bits of advice you could give them? Okay. Um, well, I would say, I see there's a lot of questions about maths and stuff. So Personally, I would say um, math is probably a good idea, but it's not really, really math intense. So, like, if you don't study math, it will be okay. But I would recommend doing math. Um, 
And also you've probably heard of like the prefixes and the milli micros and everything. I've noticed they come up a lot. So I would really recommend um, getting them well, yeah, well known. Brilliant, thank you. That's excellent. Yeah. Is Charlie there? Hopefully we've got Charlie on the background now. Do we know if Charlie's turned up? Yes, he's trying to get his equipment to work, so he's going to try the microphone. Okay, so maybe we'll give Charlie a few minutes and see if he maybe wants to we'll go into the question and answer. And if Charlie can manage to get his microphone working, we we can stop and ask him a few questions as well. So uh, put him there as well. So I'm going to pass you on now to Miss Knight Airy. Uh, and she is going to answer some of the questions. She's going to read out and answer some of the questions that you've been asking whilst I've been talking away. So thank you very much for listening. And I'll pass you over now to Miss Nayeri. Okay. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Um, so I've been typing a few answers already, but I'm just going to read for the benefit of everybody who's watching later. Um, so here we are. Um, questions about our average class size. Usually um, it's anything between 18 to 24 maximum at the moment. Um, how much time is spent on practical experiments? So at the moment we have planned one practical every two weeks. Um, sometimes we may do a little bit more, but yes, that's what you can expect uh, in general, one every two weeks. Um, do I only need a seven in maths and one in physics to be able to take the course? Yes, that's the correct set of any requirements. Um, I suppose if you are an international student, um, that may be something more applicable to you, but in general, yes, seven in maths and one in physics. Or yeah. in combined sciences, I think. Yeah, and then for the double award, if you are the double award, that is seven in both the double award students. Thank you. And um, if you're not sure which of the three sciences you want to do with maths, could you start off doing all three and then drop your least favorite during your first year? So yes, you can do that. Although college only allows someone to start with four subjects in the study program if they're really strong candidates. So if we see that you're doing really well at GCSE, then yes, that's a good option actually. You can do maths, the three sciences, and then decide which ones to keep. Um, which examination body uh, we have, so that's AQA. Um, in terms of subject combinations, do you need to study maths together with physics? So no, you're not required to take maths, but we do recommend it definitely. Uh, we have a few students um, every year, maybe one or two per set that are not doing maths. Um, and, you know, we can be very open about it, just encourage them. Sometimes we do tend to assume that everybody's doing maths, but that's not true. So we do encourage you to basically talk to us and we can point you to resources to fill in the gap or maybe you can do some one-to-one. -one. Um, but also I find that usually students manage to get help from each other. So really, I, I don't see that the issue very often. You help each other out, which is really good. Um, how many students overall do we have in our department? So it's around 250, I believe. So quite a large one, yes. And, uh, I think our current year 13 is about 300 students. Oh. Yeah, they're a big year group and our year 12, are uh, about 275 students, so one set, one set smaller. So I think I've definitely underestimated that, double my answer. Okay. How much does it benefit to you to take maths further maths and physics too? Would you gain, what would you gain in particular for doing them both? Um, I think Charlie, our other year 13, was um, answering this one. Um, he said, further maths isn't essential at all to study physics. However, the maths course does help and complement the subject a lot. And I, I would agree with this. So further maths, 
if you're doing maths, you're, you're going to find physics easier. I think you're going to find the analytical skills, being able to rearrange equations, um, that sort of thing, you're going to find it easier. And then also in maths, there's a topic called mechanics. So it's nice to see the same subject, the physics approach and the maths approach. Um, in terms of further maths, it's probably something to consider if you're planning to do a STEM degree um, or going to a STEM career after college. It's not necessarily to help you do the physics course. Um, Mia, would you like to add anything else or anything else you want to add to this, Dr. Bauer? Yeah, I would really second what um, Ms. Nairia said. Um, from my experience, um, we covered some topics in physics first and then we ended up going on and doing them in maths and further maths. So I would say don't choose further maths um, because you think, oh, we'll make physics physics easier choose further maths because you really like maths and you like the challenge of maths but they definitely will complement each other and yeah as um she said it kind of gives you a different perspective and insight doing it in maths and in physics so yeah and then on the other hand i suppose only as mia says only do it if you really enjoy the maths because you are going to have less time for your independent study in your other three subjects. So that's something to consider. You have to be a bit more realistic in that case. Um, and next question was, how many hours a week would be spent on homework? So this is sort of the general advice from college for every subject, you should spend about five hours um, on independent study. And um, this can be homework, but if you're someone who tends to be very efficient with their time, maybe you can spend less less time on your homework and you, you still want to work up to five hours so you maybe can uh, look at um, extra readings maybe you can find some lectures um, so not everybody will be spending those five hours working on exactly the same things so, um, so Pia, how, how how much time would you say you spend um okay this probably varies but i'm the kind of person who spends quite a lot of time so i would try very hard to make everything as good as it can be so probably can get up to five hours especially with practical work and really considering evaluating our experiments and everything so yeah but you could you could probably be a bit more efficient than i am but i kind of like going into the nitty-gritty with everything with all the targets we looked at together me and last year remember <laughs> yes um okay then i'm gonna go to the other questions does physics go well with computer science i would say yes it's a very popular combination actually um i think in computer science you have to do a little project and lots of computer science students who also do physics base their simulation or was whatever they work on, on things they've learned in physics. So I think, yes, it does go really well. Yeah, so one of our enrichment options is we have a very active robotics society. Uh, so, and that requires a lot of uh, physics and computational uh, skills as part of that. So that is a very popular uh, society, which is always oversubscribed. Um, the society hosts their own robotics competition for local schools, so they will uh, invite local schools to come and take part in the competition here, as well as build their own robots and take part in their own robotics and take part in external robotics competitions as well. Uh, and we always have at least 30 odd students uh, coming in asking for bits of equipment to make various parts for uh, various robots uh, and they're often out in the foyer with little robots driving around and so it's, it's great fun. Yeah. Yes, they, they actually take over this classroom usually for robotics. Um, then Imogen is asking do we have the same teacher for all topics or will there be different teachers for each topic? So usually, well, usually you would have two teachers and one teacher is working on a topic and the other teacher is working on a different topic. 
And sometimes we may split a topic if it's a big one, for example, um, electricity, we may split it into two parts. So at the beginning of the year, one teacher is teaching you the basics, then you have a break from that topic, you work on other things, and then when you go back to that same topic and you build on it, it will be the other teacher taking over. And that's nice, having those two different perspectives. Um, so yes, in general, two teachers, and they are independent from each other. Um, is physics less important career-wise in comparison to biology or chemistry? I'm going to say no, definitely not. Um, I mean, that's what Dr. Bauer was talking about at the beginning in terms of the, the, the jobs you could go into. You can go into finance and um, um, economics, finance, law. Um, uh, there's all sorts of, I mean, the technical skills you get in physics. You know, my doctorate is in cancer research, which was using physics as an application uh, in a medical environment. Actually, yes, that's a really good point. You can end up working in hospitals as a, as a physicist. So the people who decide in, in the radiology departments who decide um, how to, how to um, manage the cancer treatment in terms of radiotherapy, it's a physicist. So it's the physicist together with the doctor. Um, yeah, and if you are in physics, in terms of the technical jobs, it's less repetitive. I don't want to be attacking the biologists and the chemists, but sometimes in terms of the um, jobs they, they do in the lab, I think there is a very repetitive component to it. Uh, when they're testing, uh, maybe looking at the properties of a new molecule or uh, a new... Um, What's the word? Um, a, fair, a medicine, basically. In physics, there's much less of that. It's all new exploration, usually. Um, I would just say, at the end of the day, it's about what what interests you and what is important to you. The yeah. subjects that you choose should be subjects that you feel interest you. Uh, and any career or any job should, should, you know, you should stem from an interest in those subjects. As I say, physics is a versatile subject in that it allows you to study or be able to see and have knowledge of lots and lots of other fields. And that's why it's valued as, as a subject. But as a biochemist, I would be looking for, you know, if I wanted to go into biochemistry, you would need the biology and the chemistry. So it really does depend on what you want to do uh, and where your future aspirations lie. I wouldn't say it's any more or any less important. Every subject has its own role. And, and these days, industry is looking for people who are multidimensionals, who can apply their hand, take knowledge of one subject and apply it to another subject. Okay. And we've got another couple of minutes. I'm going to read maybe one more. Um, what facilities does Hills Road have for physics? Now, it's a bit of a shame that you, you cannot come in for our open evening, but we do have um, four teaching labs. So we do have the equipment to run all of the required practicals, um, which is actually not something that all schools have. Um, we have special equipment specialist equipment, for example, um, CROs, cathode ray oscilloscopes. We've got um, all sorts of signal generators, all the lab equipment really that you would need for practicals. Um, so one of the year 13 practicals, uh, which is a requirement for A-level, you'll get to handle radioactive sources. Mm. Okay, you get to use lasers in year 12. So these are both required practicals. Um, so you get, to see and have a go at using some quite cool kit okay and you know some of these everyday piece of equipment even like a multimeter very versatile but we use them quite commonly within the department there are quite a lot more interesting questions so what we will do we will um type up our answers and then they will be posted to you um so yes you, you will get some answer uh, if not in this session. If we can take maybe another minute, Charlie has sent me um, 
are typed up. Um, yeah, Charlie was having difficulty yeah. with his internet and he's not been able to connect. So I'm just going to read from, from uh, what he's just sent me. He, he's chatting to me now. He's saying, I really enjoyed studying at ph uh, physics at A level. It's been quite tough, but A levels are meant to challenge you. And a step up from GCC felt very natural. A level physics really allows you to broaden your horizons regarding the world around you and answers those budding questions you had at GCSC. Um, and overall, I would strongly recommend anyone with a keen interest in the STEM subjects to take a, an A level in physics, as it's one of the most interesting and facilitating subjects, actually, yes. Um, for higher education, you can take a Hughes road. Apologies, I couldn't connect. Okay. Thanks, Charlie, for that. There's just one question I was gonna quickly look at, and that was about the maths content. So overall in your final exams, about 40% of the paper will rely on maths content and skills. Uh, and, and for the most part, that content is just higher end GCSE, other than a little bit in terms of natural logs and exponentials, which we will teach you. Uh, it's really those higher end GCC algebra trigonometry skills that are needed at A level physics. Okay, and students will come and often buy a graphical calculator. You don't need a graphical calculator for A level physics, obviously, you will for your maths, uh, but just your general standard box standard calculator is really all you need uh, to help you through the A level physics course. Okay, so we're nearly coming to the end of our session but any questions that we haven't been able to answer for you we will go through at the end uh, and get back to you with a response we have your contact details we'll be able to give you a response to any of those questions that we haven't been able to answer okay so thank you for listening uh, please come back. Remember, this video will be available after half term. So if you did miss anything, you'll be able to come back and watch the video again. And I would like to thank Miss Nayeri for her time tonight. And obviously, Mia and our students, Mia and Charlie. Apologies that Charlie couldn't connect, uh, but he did manage to offer some feedback and uh, answer some questions there. So thank you all for listening. Enjoy the rest of your evening and we'll hopefully see many of you in, in person at Hills Road. Brilliant. Thank you. Good night.